Today we're learning how to build this blog using Node.js, Express, MongoDB and Cyclic. This is a full stack blog app designed for beginners and intermediates that will teach you the basics of building a CRUD blog app. By the end of this tutorial you will have built this main page that has a highlighted blog post in the top and other articles below it. If we click on one, let's say this one, we get a detail page with the image, the title, the date the post was made and the author as well as the post content all fetched from MongoDB and the database that we have made. And it looks good as you can see on mobile as well as desktop. If we go back, we see that all the posts are loaded again. If we click our hamburger menu up top, we have the option to register or log in as a user. If I register a new user with a username of admin, and the password of admin. And then I change the user type from reader to admin, which means that this user will be able to create, update and delete posts. Register that, we get a nice little alert here. Then I can log in with the newly created password and username. And we see that now I have a couple of more options on our blog posts. I can update the blog, which gives me a way to change the title. So let's say John instead of Bob. And let's just add another piece of text here. And then I can update the post and that will update the title as we can see and also add another piece of text here. I can also decide to delete a post. Let's say I don't like this post. I hit the delete button and now the database and all its posts are updated in real time. At the bottom, I also have an option to create a new post, new better post, and let's just say content. And then I can give it an image URL that will be the main picture. So here I am on Unsplash and I can copy the image address, go back to the blog, paste that in there and then create the post. We get a nice little alert saying that it was successful and we see that now the image, the title, the date and the user as well as the content has all been saved and posted to the blog that is live and hosted on Cyclic. If we log out from our user, we go back to only being able to read the posts on the blog. This blog is of course fully mobile responsive and looks good across devices, as you can see. We are going to use MongoDB for our database. We're going to use Express and Node to run our CRUD operations. And we're going to use Cyclic to actually host our whole web app, both the front end and the back end and everything for free. So if you want to learn how to make a simple CRUD blog and host it for free online without using any framework, simple vanilla HTML, CSS and JavaScript, then let's get started. The first thing you're going to do if you don't already have a github account is you're going to go to github.com and you're going to register and create a user there we're going to use this to save our project repository and to also upload and host it to cyclic later on then you're going to download github desktop if you're not familiar with git commands natively in the terminal then GitHub Desktop is going to make that much more smoother and easier for you. As well, I use Visual Studio Code in this tutorial. You're free to use any code editor you want, but that's the one I use. So if you don't have that installed, then install that now as well. Then you're going to open your GitHub Desktop and it's going to look a bit like this. So I'm currently in the finished repository of the blog. We are going to click this button. We're going to create a new repository. We're going to call it whatever we want. I am going to call it a CRUD blog 2. We're going to keep everything else as default. Hit create repository. Then we're going to click publish repository. We're going to keep this code public, but you can decide to keep it private as you want. Then we're going to publish repository and we can open it in Visual Studio Code. So here is the start of our app. It's completely empty. We just have this git attributes uh, text file. We can delete that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open our terminal. I'm going to hit new terminal and inside of here we're going to write node dash dash version 
hit enter and if you don't get a number here it means that you don't have node installed on your computer or in this project so what you're gonna do then as you can see I have version 20.8 uh, we're gonna use node in this project and it's crucial that you have that installed uh, before continuing the tutorial so if you don't have node installed then you're gonna go to nodejs.org and you're gonna go to slash English slash download, whatever language it is for you, and you're going to download Node for whichever uh, device you have. This is a pre-built installer and should be relatively smooth to set up. Once you have completed the installation, then go in and check the version again. And if you get a number, it means it is correct. You have Node installed and you can continue this tutorial. If you don't get the number, you get an error message then go back and please install node and make it work before you continue the tutorial. So let's clear our console here. The next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna initialize a new node project with the default settings. And the way we do that is we're gonna run npm init for initialize and then uh, dash y to just say yes to all the default questions. Hit that and that is going to create this package JSON file here that we see like so basically giving us a default node.js project so we can close our terminal for now and inside of here this package.json file is basically all the dependencies that we're using for this project so we're going to add a couple of more here which are going to be all the npm packages that we're going to use throughout this project. So in this package JSON file, we're gonna include all the dependencies that we're gonna use for this project. And for the sake of following this tutorial with minimal hiccups and issues, I would highly advise that you're, that I would highly advise that you install the exact same version of each dependency as I have in this file here. So I'm gonna leave the finished file down below in the description so you can copy paste it inside of this package JSON file. So we're gonna write here dependencies and inside of this dependencies object, we're gonna write bcrypt that is gonna be of the version 5.1. Be sure to add a comma after license. So now, since I have just written this inside of here, nothing is happening. If I save that, it's not gonna be available in my project. I'll have to open the terminal, and then I can say npm i for install, hit enter, and that is gonna now install uh, this new package that I added. Bcrypt. If I open this, you see this node modules folder that was created here. We can see that we have now, uh, let's see, let's find it. As well as default files, we should have Bcrypt. Here we go. Before we continue and before we um, um, upload, if we go to our GitHub desktop here, we don't want to now save this repository and upload all our node modules that we just installed and fetched from npm um, because that's going to be a lot of uh, uh, a lot of data unnecessary data so we want to in our folder here we want to create a new file we want to call it dot git ignore like so inside of here we want to say node underscore modules and then slash as well as an .env file, which we're gonna create later. Node modules is this folder. We don't wanna upload any of that. We simply wanna be able to install uh, what's inside of this package JSON file, uh, wherever we are. And the .env file, well, we can create it now. That is our environmental file that is gonna keep the password um, to our uh, JSON web token as well as the MongoDB URI, basically how we connect to our MongoDB database. 
which also holds our username and our password to that database. So we're gonna hold kind of two secrets here and we also don't wanna put them anywhere else in our project because we wanna keep those secret and not fully available on the repository. But we're gonna get back to the environmental file and for now we have the git ignore. It's actually done, we can close this, it doesn't need anything more there. Then we can continue with uh, putting our dependencies here. So instead of writing out all the dependencies and having the chance of making a mistake and potentially making your project not work, I'm gonna ask you to go down into the description of this video. You're gonna go to the link that says dependencies and you're gonna go and copy paste the code there. And you're gonna just paste it in here. And that's gonna be all the dependencies that we need for this project. I am gonna to explain to you now what each of these do. So starting with number one, bcrypt is a library for hashing passwords securely. So it's often used to store and verify user passwords in a more secure uh, way, which is what we're gonna do. And bcrypt.js is another library for hashing passwords similar to bcrypt. And we're gonna use this to work with our JavaScript code. Body parser is middleware uh, for express.js and that is going to parse our request bodies when we are sending uh, data. So it's used to extract data from HTTP requests such as JSON format. Next one is course, which is a security feature, uh, stands for cross-origin resource sharing, and it's implemented in uh, Express.js as a middleware. It allows or restricts web pages running at one origin to make requests to a different domain. Next one is .env. It's a zero dependency module used to load environment variables from a .env file that we just made. Then of course we have Express, which is a popular Node.js framework, a backend framework. It basically simplifies building web applications and APIs. Next one is JSON Web Token, which is a method for securely transmitting information between different places. And JSON Web Token Decode is a library for decoding JSON Web Tokens on the client side, on our front end. Then we have MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database, and this is a library used to connect and interact with MongoDB databases. We also have Mongoose, which is an object data modeling library for MongoDB and Node.js. It, it provides a more structured way to work with MongoDB where you define uh, schemas and models for your data. So we're gonna define a post schema, we're gonna define a user schema using Mongoose. Then we have serve favicon, which is gonna be basically allowing us to um, display our favicon in our application. And last one is validator, which is a library used to validate data in a Node.js application which we are gonna to use to validate our inputs in our input fields. So once we have all of those here, we are gonna go back to the terminal, we're gonna run npm i for install, and that is gonna install all of our packages that we just put in here. So then we should have something like added 113 packages, found zero vulnerabilities, that's great. It might change by the time you're watching this video as several newer versions uh, get released but in essence, it should still work. The next thing we're gonna add is we're gonna add a new folder, create a new folder, we're gonna call it public, and this folder is just gonna keep our favicon. So for now, I'm gonna just drag and drop this favicon in here for my finished repository. You can find this favicon down in the description below. If you want to make your own favicon, this is the website I used, favicon.io. If you click that, I use the emoji one, and then I think I, uh, I think I went for animals in nature, and I think I searched for a rose. Yeah, there we go, rosette. That's the favicon I use. So if you click that, or let's say you want to have the di dinosaur, the sauropod, you can just download that and replace this favicon.ico with the one that you download. You can also create your completely own unique favicon, but we're not gonna use too much time on that here. So now we have our favicon ready. We can close the terminal and we're gonna scroll up here and we are gonna see that we have 
something called main here, that's our main uh, file here, which is index.js, which we don't really have yet. Uh, we can create that file now, index.js. That is gonna be the main file that we run. We're also gonna add inside of the scripts here, add a comma here uh, after tests, and we are gonna add another start script, and that is gonna be running our node index.js like so hit save now if we open our terminal actually let's open the index.js let's just add a console log here saying running hit save i'm also using a prettier uh, extension for uh, formatting my code which you can find uh, in the extensions here i have a separate video i'm going to link here for you if you want to install that then let's open our terminal and write npm start. And we see running is written here. So that start script is working. We can close that now. And we can close this index.js file for now. We are going to focus first on the HTML and CSS. And we're going to set that up for us before we move on to actually the client and the server side JavaScript that we're gonna be creating to make all of these CRUD operations like creating a post and updating a post. But first we're just gonna make a template for us for both the uh, index.html, so that's gonna be our home page, And we're also gonna create another uh, post, let's see, post dot, post dot detail html so this is going to be our home page and then this is going to be whenever we click on uh, an individual post you can also close this package json file in addition we're going to have one styles.css file as well as a navigation.js file that's going to control our nav menu and another file, our last file, is gonna be a script.js file. That is gonna be our client-side JavaScript, while index.js is gonna be our server-side JavaScript. So both the backend and the frontend. And that is all the files we need in this project. So now let's close all here and open the index.html. You can also close the explorer. Also go to view and turn on word wrap. We're gonna write exclamation mark, which gives us a boilerplate HTML. I'm gonna change the title to Nordic Rose, which is what I'm calling this blog. You can call it whatever, of course. And then we're gonna link up our style sheet, CSS. It's gonna be style.css. That is uh, not correct. We need to add an S here, like so. It's just preference. And let's also connect our two script files. So script, and that is gonna be source of script.js. Let's add a defer so it runs after all of the HTML. Shift Alt down or Shift Options down if you're on Mac. We'll copy the code and now we can change that to nav.js. And inside the body, let's just write an h1 here and say uh, my blog and hit save. I also have an extension called live server, which you should download and install if you don't already have that which is gonna make us be able to press this button here, say go live, and that is opening this browser window here where we can see that our index.html is working. If we inspect it here as well, we're getting an error to display our favicon. It's because we haven't added that functionality yet, so don't worry about that. We're gonna solve that later on. So now we can focus on creating the actual HTML content for our main page. And when I now, because of live server, when I now update with new text, it is gonna be instantly updated on each save. 
So the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to remove the h1. We're going to create a nav element instead. And it's going to have a class of nav, which we're going to use later in our CSS. We are then inside a nav going to create another div. And using emmet abbreviation, we can add another class name here. So dot and then nav underscore underscore logo and then hit enter. That's going to create a div with the class what we named it. Inside of this div, we're going to create an href, an anchor tag. So a, and that's going to just be slash, and that's going to be our logo up top here, which is going to bring us just to our home page. And we're going to call it Nordic Rose, like so. Let's refresh our page. Okay, great. So clicking that takes us to our home page. Works well, as we can see. And then after this div, we want to create, let me just make this a bit wider, like so. Inside here, we are going to create another anchor tag and we're going to give it a class of nav underscore underscore hamburger. We're going to remove the href. We don't need it here. But instead, inside of the anchor tag, we're going to add a span. This span is going to have a class of nav underscore underscore hamburger underscore underscore line. And these are going to be in the top right, the actual hamburger lines. Hold shift alt or shift option and press down twice. It's going to give us the three lines, which we obviously don't see now because we haven't styled them. Then after the anchor, we're going to create another div. And this is going to have a class of nav underscore underscore menu. That is going to be the actual menu we open. It's that we can see here in the finished uh, blog. So what we are creating now is the content inside of the menu. Inside of the nav underscore menu, we're going to create a div. Inside of that div, we're going to create another div. It is going to have an ID of register dash form. Inside of that form, we're going to have an H1. And it's going to say register. Under that H1, we're going to have a form. It doesn't need an action, so we're just going to delete that. But we are going to give it an ID of register dash form. And sorry, here in the div above H1, this one should be a register div, not form. So make sure to have those correct. Then we want to create an input element here. That is going to be where we write our username and our password. So this first one is going to have the type of text. It's also going to have an ID of register dash username. And also it's going to have a placeholder of username. Like so. And then let's target the whole input and shift all down. And this is also going to be, uh, no, it's actually going to be a type of password. Like so. And we're going to say register password instead of username and here password. Then we are going to create our select that is going to select whether we want to create a reader or admin a user. It is going to have no name here, but it is going to have an ID of register and then role. Inside of here, we are going to have an option. And the first one is going to be reader. And it's going to say reader. And then and then shift all down, we are going to say admin. And also 
admin. Finally, within this form, we are going to have a button under the select, and that is going to be type of submit, submit, like so. It is going to have register within the button. So now, when we put our username, we put our password, and then we can choose. Let me just zoom in this for you, like so. Then we can choose which type we want to create and register. Obviously, we don't want this showing all the time. We only want it like in the finished blog to show when we click the nav menu here. But we're going to fix that with our CSS and JavaScript shortly. Then under the form and under the next div, we want to create another div. This is going to have an ID of logout div. And that is going to be what we see when we are logged in. It's going to be a button here that says logout. Inside of this div, we're going to create an h2 with an ID of username. And here we're going to say username. It's a default um, text. But here we are basically going to input, we're going to use this ID to uh, write the username of the logged in user inside of this text instead of username. We're also going to have a button with an ID of logout button. Inside this button, we're going to say logout. Then after this logout button, let's create some space here. Here we're going to create the login form. So we're going to create a new div with an ID of login div inside of here, an h1, which is going to say login. Under the h1, we're going to create a form, and that form is going to have not an action, but an ID of login form. And then inside of that form, we're going to have an input that is going to be type text ID of login username as well as a place. Let's see, holder username as well. And then another input with type of password. and a ID of login, let's see, login password, as well as a placeholder of password, like so. Similar to the registration under the form, we're going to have a button. It is going to have an ID of login button and it is going to have a type of submit and it's going to say login and now our nav is done we have all the elements we need obviously everything is not going to be shown like this we're going to show register and login by default. And then when we are logged in, we are going to hide those two and we're going to only show the log out div. But now we have all the elements within our nav. So we can collapse the nav to give us a bit more space here. And then under the nav, we can create a main element where the rest of our content is going to be. And inside of here, we can create a div with an ID of posts list, like so. So posts in plural. And then this is where we're going to dynamically put our posts. So we're going to create the actual content of our post. And we are also going to, for the time being, put some hard coded posts in here, well, at least one. Um, that, so that we can see how we are styling things before we move on to actually 
inputting these uh, posts dynamically from our database. So we are going to comment here. We're going to get back to here. And for now, we're just going to create another div. It is going to have also an ID of new dash post div, like so. And we're going to give it a style inline style here of display none. Then inside of this, we are going to have an H2. It is going to say new post. So this is, let's remove this for now. As we can see, the new post is also going to just be showing up at the bottom here when we are logged in as an admin user. Then we're going to create a form. It is going to have an ID of new post form. Inside of that form, we're going to create an input with a type of text with an ID of title and with a placeholder of title. Then under here, we're going to see a text area, which is where we're going to create a, a content of our posts. It is going to have no name, but an ID of content. We can remove these and we're going to say placeholder. It's going to be content. Then under the text area, we're going to have another input type text ID of image dash URL placeholder of image URL. Then under the form, we are going to add a button, which is going to have an ID of post detail container. Then under the last input, we're going to have a button with a type of submit, and it's going to say create post. And then under the form, under the first div, we're going to create another div with an ID of post dash detail dash container, like so. And then we are done with our uh, post section. Now we can move on to our footer, which we're going to have after our main. So we say footer. Inside the footer, an H3, we're going to say Nordic rows. So under there, a paragraph, we're going to say lorem 20. Just give us a bit of boilerplate lorem ipsum. Under the paragraph, another span. Inside here, a paragraph. And here we're going to write the copy. If we go to our finished blog, we have the current year and also the copy. If we zoom in here, we can see that better. We have the copyright symbol. Zoom in even more. You can see it here. So that's what we're adding now. Inside of this paragraph, we're going to say, and we're going to write the HTML code for the copyright symbol. So it starts with and copy and then semicolon, and then save that. And we see that we have gotten our copy symbol here. Then we are going to add a script tag here, which is not the best way to input this. We could have done this in a nicer way, but we're going to be a bit lazy here. And we're just going to use some JavaScript straight in our HTML. And we're going to say, write new date. And then the dot get full year, like so, and save that. And that is going to write the whole year, um, the current year that we have using the inbuilt um, 
date JavaScript method. So that is all the HTML we need for the finished product. But since we don't have a post now, we don't, we don't have a database, we don't have the JavaScript uh, fetching any posts, but we want to still be able to style the main page with a post, at least, let's say two. Uh, so we're going to input some um, hard-coded posts in the post list here. Also, let's take this new post div and put back the inline style here and say display is going to be none to hide that last part. We are going to be displaying that and changing that in our JavaScript later on when we are an uh, admin user and we can create a new post. Unless we're not an admin, this is not going to show up. So let's put in some hard-coded posts here. The first we're going to add is we're going to add a div and it is going to have an ID of post post dot ID. It is also going to have a class of post. Inside of this post, we are going to add an image. It is going to have a source and let's find the source for an image. So we're going to go to unsplash.com. We're just going to take any image we like. I'm going to take this one, copy image address, and I'm going to paste it in here like so. We see that the image is being displayed. As an alt, we're just going to say image. Then after the image, we are going to add a div. It is going to have a class of post dash title. Here we're going to say this is, and here we're going to say post title that we see is showing up here. And then inside of this post title div, we are going to add an h1. And here we are going to add an anchor tag. It's going to have an href. And we're going to leave that blank for now. And inside of here, we're going to just add a post title. Post title for a nice post. Very, very creative. Then we are going to add a span. and a paragraph inside of that span. And we are going to say author. And then we're going to add another paragraph and say time stamp, like so. So this is going to be where our author name or our username and our the time that we made the post is going to show up, as we can see here. Then after this span, we are going to create another div. It is going to have an ID of admin buttons. And of course, then inside of there, we're going to add some buttons. Button one is going to have a class of BTN. And here it's going to say delete. Then we can shift alt or shift option, hit down. And this is going to be create. Then after the div, we are going to add an HR, to, which is going to be our separator from the first post blog, blog post and the rest of the list, as we can see here, this separator here. And then we are ready to make the styling for our um, main page. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to fonts.google.com to get our custom fonts that we're going to use on our page. First one is going to be Bodoni. I'm going to search for that. Bodoni Moda. We are going to target basically all of the different fonts here or the different sizes and stylings. Then we are going to search for Sinzel. And it's going to be the first one. We're going to target all of them as well. And then last, we're going to target Poppins. And just grab 
all of the different types. Then we're going to go to the top right and here we're going to see the selected families that we have uh, chosen. So with the three fonts and we're going to copy this whole link here. Copy that and we're going to put it under the styles and over the script. So inside of here. Paste and save and now we have these fonts accessible to us. Let us now open our uh, style sheet. If we hold control and click styles.css, we see that we open that and we can close Google Fonts and let's get back to our page. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna target the body and we are gonna say, remove the margins for me, zero. And then we're gonna say, I want the font family to be, let's say, I want the font family to be Sinzel. And then if you don't have that, a serif font. As we can see that updated our font here. Then I want to target the nav. And I want to say height is going to be 51 pixels. 51. The display is going to be flex. It's going to be justify content space between. It's going to have a line items of center. It's going to have color. Oops. Color of black. A Z index of one. A position of fixed. And it's going to start from the top, zero, and left, zero. It's going to have a width, taking the whole width, 100 view width, not 200, but 100. It's going to have a background color of white and a border bottom of one pixel, solid RGBA. Zero, 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 and zero point sixteen. So if we increase that, save, then we are going to target the nav dash logo, actually underscore underscore logo, and we are going to say font size is going to be twenty four pixels. And we want the margin to be auto and 32 pixels. Let's zoom out to a normal size. Then we are going to target this whole nav logo, shift alt down, and we are going to target the anchor inside of the nav logo. We are going to say the text decoration is going to be none to remove this uh, underline and we're also going to say color is going to be black. Then we're going to go on new line. We're going to target nav underscore underscore menu and then the div and we're going to say it is going to have a display of flex. It is going to have a flex direction of column. It is going to have a width of 100% and it's going to have a line items to the center. Moving along, we are going to target the nav underscore underscore menu list and then the hover. And it is going to have a background color of RGBA 250, 255, 255, and 0 0.5 in transparency. 
then we're going to target the nav underscore underscore oops don't forget the dot nav underscore underscore hamburger we are going to give it a width of 30 pixels height 21 pixels display none by default flex direction column justify content space around position of absolute top of 16 pixels and right of 32 pixels then we are going to target the nav underscore underscore hamburger underscore underscore line we're going to say it's going to have a height of one pixel width of a hundred percent background color of black border radius of one pixel and a transition of all these in and also out and that's going to be of 1.2 seconds that is going to be the transition when we open and close our nav menu when it turns from lines to an x then we're going to target our register dash form as well as our login dash form and we are going to say display flex flex direction column and gap of 12 pixels then to actually make this look good we have to add some media queries because it's not looking very very good now so I'm going to comment here and say media queries queries and then under here we're going to say here we're going to say at media screen and and here we're going to say max width of 50 50 pixels so anything under that is going to count inside of here we're going to say nav hamburger we're going to give it a display of flex as well as a z index of 2 now it's starting to show up here we are going to target our nav menu give it a position of absolute a display of flex align items to the center background color of RGBA oops RGBA and then we can choose this one and we're going to say 0 0.9 making it show closer and closer to the finished project let's zoom in a bit then we're going to say top is going to be minus 100 view height pushing it over our top of our page and then height is going to be a hundred view height and width is going to be a hundred percent so now if we uncomment this top we see that we have our login and our logout um, page here uh, is just pushed over the edge of the screen I'm going to leave that commented out then we're going to target our nav 
and say it's going to have a flex direction of column and it's going to have an align items of flex start. After here we're going to target the nav menu and we are going to say give it a z index of 1 nav menu and then the active and we're going to say top it's going to be 0 and nav hamburger active and then the nth child 1 so that is our first line in the finished one that's the first line here the nth child 2 is this one the nth child 3 is the third line this one is gonna have a transform rotate 45 degrees and it's also gonna have a translate of seven pixels and three pixels. So this is what turns it into an X. It's gonna turn, make it, uh, as you can see, the first line tilts downwards on the right side, and the second line tilts upwards on the right side as well. And then the middle line is gonna disappear. So let's copy this whole line, shift all down twice. We are gonna say two here and three in the third one and here we're going to change it from transform to opacity we're going to say zero and in the third one it's going to be rotate minus 45 degrees and translate minus three pixels we also forgot in our nav menu here under width we're going to add a transition of all ease in and out of 0 0.4 seconds and then these are correct then we are ready to move on to our main section now our nav is looking quite good we haven't given it the right colors yet but we're going to do that later let's now hide it by putting it back to its original position it's going to show up when we click this hamburger menu with some javascript code so let's scroll down and now we are ready to do our main section. Next up, let's target our logout-div and we're going to give it a display of none by default. Then we're going to target all paragraphs and we are going to give them the font family of Let's see, we're going to say Bodoni Moda. And if that is not available, we're going to give it a serif font. Then we're going to target the main section and we're going to give it a margin top of 100 pixels. Then we're going to target our input, our button, our select and our text area and we're going to give all of those a height of 32 pixels border radius of 2 pixels box let's see oops box shadow of 0 2 pixels 5 pixels 0 RGBA and then 0, 0, 0 and then 0 0.26 opacity and we're also going to give it border of none and also a width of 140 pixels then we are going to target our input we are going to give it a width of 136 pixels we're going to target our button i'm going to give that a background color of hashtag 428 
F4. Like so, a nice blue modern color. Let's also give it a color for the text of white and a transition of 0.2 seconds and a transition, let's see, delay of 0.2 seconds. Then when the button is active, we are going to give it a box shadow of 0, 0, 8 pixels, 17 pixels, 0 RGBA, and 0 0.2 for the opacity. And also a transition delay of 0 seconds. Then we're going to target the button hover. We're going to target the select hover. We're going to target the nav underscore underscore hamburger. And also the post. And we're going to say cursor pointer. Then let's scroll back up and find the, let's see, top. Let's comment that out. And then we can see the result. It is looking very good. And now I am zoomed in, so it's also looking a bit not like it will in the finished version. So it's looking quite good. Let me zoom back in. And let's comment this out again. Remove the comment. Now we are ready to move on to our post list, which is going to style uh, all our posts, including the first one here. So we're going to target our main. We're going to say text align center, like so. We're going to target our post title and then the h1 and the anchor tag inside of there. We're going to say color is going to be black. And the text decoration is going to be none. Making the title a bit nicer. We're also going to copy this one and add a comma here because the other, the first post is going to have an H1, but the other posts are going to have an H3 because they're going to be a bit smaller, as we can see here. If I zoom out a bit, it's a bit easier to see the size difference. This is an H1 and this is a, these are H3s. So we're targeting both the main post and all the other posts here. Then we are going to target the post posts list and we're going to say text align center and target posts list image and also detail post image They're going to have a width of 90%, making that picture much smaller and adaptable. They're going to have a max width on bigger screen sizes of 40, 450 pixels. Height is going to be auto based on the width. And it's going to have an object fit of cover as well as an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Keeping all the pictures the same aspect and size and ratio, regardless of the screen size. So it's going to look good and dynamic. Then we can target the posts list and then the div inside there. 
and we're gonna say display flex and we are gonna justify the content to the center we are also gonna give it a flex direction of column and we're gonna align items to the center then we are gonna target the posts list the div and then the first child which is only the first post or the first post is image and the detail post image which we haven't made yet those are gonna have a width of a hundred percent as well as a max width of 900 pixels because they're going to be bigger as we can see on the finished blog post especially if i zoom out or make it desktop sized we see that this one is much bigger and now it should also be the case here as it is let's copy this down shift alt or shift option down we're going to say post list, post list, and then div and that is going to be dot post title it is going to have a width of 70% and a max width of 400 pixels we're going to copy this selector one more time and now it's going to be first child and then post title this one is going to be 80 percent and max width of 750 then we're going to target the h3 i'm going to give it a font size of 18 pixels font weight of 300 and the margin bottom of 30 pixels also we're going to target posts list span and then the paragraph and we're going to say margin 10 pixels let's also in between or after the h3 here target the posts list again and we want to go into the div and target the first child and the h1 we want to give it the font size of 36 pixels max width of 900 pixels we want to give it a font family of poppins and then sans serif if that fails and a font weight of 500 and a font style of italic which as we can see is what we have here so let me zoom out there we go zooming out looks to be correct then let's scroll down and target the HR which is our line we're gonna say it's gonna have a width of 80% of the page it is gonna have a border color of black it is gonna have a margin bottom of 40 pixels it is going to have a margin top of 50 pixels it is going to have a padding of 0 and it's going to have a max width of 700 pixels then we're going to target the h2 and give it a margin bottom of 30 pixels then we're going to target the new post section that we have currently hidden let's remove 
this part as well in our HTML. New post, let's remove this style display none. We'll add that back later. For now, we want to see what we are styling. So let's target the admin buttons. Also, let's target the update form. And these are going to have a margin bottom of 40 pixels. We're going to target the new post div and we are going to give it a margin 60 pixels and zero. Let's copy this one down. New post div. We are also going to target the new post form as well as the update form. And these are going to have a display of flex. They are going to have a flex direction of column. Not columns, column. They're going to have a justify content to the center. They're going to have align items to the center. They're going to have a gap between them of 10 pixels and a width of 100%. Then we are going to target the text area separately. It is going to have a width of 60% and a height of 200 pixels. You can also change you can also change that because it is a text uh, area, but by default, it's going to have this uh, height and width. Then let's get back to the index and we're just going to hit control Z. Take back that style display none so that we are only going to show that when we are logged in as an admin. Then we're going to target our footer. By targeting our footer, we're going to say display flex, flex direction column, justify content center, align items center, background color black, text align center, color, oops, color white, and padding is going to be 40 pixels zero. And there we go. Then we're going to target the footer and the H3. Then the margin, zero. Then footer span and footer paragraph. And both of those are going to have a font size of 12 pixels. We're going to have a display of flex. Justify content center, align items center and max with 60%. Then we are going to target our post content. We're going to say text align justify. We're going to say margin zero auto. Width is going to be 80%. Max width is going to be 800 pixels and margin bottom is going to be 100 pixels. This is for the detail page we are doing now. Then we're going to target post content 
and then the post title as well as post content and then the post author see author and then post content post time stamp all of those are going to have a text align to the center and then let's copy paste this line remove the timestamp and they're going to have a font style italic so when we click a post it's going to have this styling let's add another post here so we can see how it looks with several posts under in these all articles page section here so back in our index .html file we are going to find our post list here and we are going to copy this post ID once down, hit save. And here we can see that it is being shown correctly. This is incorrect as far as I know. Let's see. Because in the second post we have, let's see, an H1 and this should be an H3. So let's just change that and then it's showing up correctly as we can see here and then we're going to be adding the all articles in our JavaScript but it is showing of course we're also going to write the date but things are being shown pretty much uh, accurate it seems like also we're not going to have these button displayed by default but it is seeming to work the styling. So now we are done with our CSS, we can move on to creating our JavaScript and we're going to start easy. We're going to start with creating our nav bar here uh, actually functioning. So we're going to leave this hard-coded HTML for now. So now we can close our styles.css and open our explorer, we can open our nav.js. The first thing we're going to do in our nav and this is not going to be a big file. It's going to be literally seven lines of code. We're going to create a constant called hamburger. It's going to have, it's going to target or get a hold of our hamburger um, div. We're going to use query selector. And then we are going to target the class. Let's not forget our uh, quotation here and it's gonna be nav hamburger like so let's try to just log this to see if it works console log hamburger and then let's inspect here console and we are console logging our hamburger so it is working we can remove that let's now Target that and copy paste down. Links container. And here it's going to be nav menu instead. And now we're going to target the hamburger. We're going to add an event listener. We're going to listen for a click. And then when that happens, we are going to run this arrow function like so. And inside the function, we're going to say take the links container, go into its class list and then toggle the active class. And then as well, Let's copy paste this down, shift alt or shift option down. You're going to do the same thing with the hamburger. You're going to go into the class list. You're going to toggle the active class. So basically when we click it the first time, it's going to add the active class. When we click it the second time, it's going to remove the active class. 
Let's see if that works. Ta-da! Because we have already made the active class in our style sheet, as you can remember here, active. So this is what is being added or toggled on and off now. Pretty cool and simple nav menu. Okay, cool. That is it for our nav.js file. We can close that. We can also close our index.html file. We are gonna make the post detail now because if we go here, index.html, instead of that, we go to post detail.html and just write that into the URL. We get to a page, but it's blank. So let's uh, fix that. Let's actually make the detail page by hard coding it and seeing if the styling is appropriately uh, uh, added. So we're gonna cheat a bit. Actually, let's go into the index.html. Let's target everything, copy, control A, and then go into the details, paste that, hit save, and then refresh, and we see that it is showing up. That's cool. We're not gonna keep everything here. We are gonna keep the things in the head. We're gonna keep the pre-connect, the style sheet, uh, the scripts. We are going to add though, we're going to change the title to be, this is going to give us errors because we don't have them yet, but we're not going to mind so much. We're going to target, or well, actually it's not going to give us errors, it's just going to show up um, as text. We're going to say post.title like so, and as we can see here it says uh, dollar sign and then curly brackets post title. We're going to target these in our JavaScript and then we're going to exchange that title with whatever title of the post is. So here it would be post title for a nice post. Then if we go down, the nav is going to stay the same. Everything here is going to stay the same. We are going to go, let's close the nav, like so. We're going to go to the main section here. We are going to remove everything inside of the post. Let's see, we're going to remove the second post completely. And we are going to remove everything inside of the post. Uh, ID div. Actually, let's remove everything inside of main and we're going to keep the footer uh, the same. Then inside of main, we can start fresh. We're going to say image. It's going to have a source and that's going to also be dollar sign curly brackets post dot image URL. So all of these um, things that are going to start with dollar sign, we're going to basically fetch that from the uh, database from MongoDB. And we are going to basically exchange that when we are going to that page. The alt is going to be detail post image. Then we're going to create a div under here. It is going to have a class of post content inside of here. It's going to be an H1. It's going to have a class of post title. Inside of here, you guessed it, it's going to be curly brackets post title. Under here, another div with a class of extra info. Inside of here, we are gonna have a paragraph with a class of post-timestamp. And inside of that, curly brackets, post.timestamp, 
copy that down and here is going to be not the timestamp but author and same for the class author then after the div we are going to have another paragraph and this is where the actual post is going to be post content so as we can see it's not very interesting for now but that is working very well as intended and then when we are fetching when we go from the main uh, site here when we click on a post we are going to be taken to the post details and here it is going to be uh, rendered all the stuff that we are receiving from the database now it's a good time to set up our MongoDB account and our actual uh, database. So we're going to go to mongodb.com. You're going to sign in with an, uh, either your Google or your GitHub or just email address. Once you're signed in, it's going to look a bit like this. Uh, I am currently on the finished uh, CRUD blog that I have shown you in the start. So we are going to set this up from scratch. We're going to go up here. We're going to say new project. And I'm just going to call it CRUD blog 2. I'm going to say next. And then we don't have to invite anyone else. I'm going to say create project. And now we have a project ready. We're going to go over to the database here. And we are going to click build a database. So obviously we don't need any of the paid stuff, although you have that option. So we're going to click free. That is going to be more than enough for our, uh, our project. Then we're going to scroll down. You can choose. Don't change any of this. You can just choose the recommended stuff. You can give your cluster another name, not really necessary. And then you're going to hit create. And then after a little moment, our cluster has finished provisioning. And then we have gotten a username and password for our database that we can create a user. So now we have a username and we have our password. And if we scroll down, we can say, where would you like to connect from? Well. We're going to choose my local environment. Our local, our current IP is already added. We're also going to click this network access page. And we're going to add a new IP. And we're going to say allow access from anywhere. This is going to help us test this and might hinder some bugs potentially in the future. And we can, of course, hit this and say, let's say one day because then this is going to be removed and it's going to increase the uh, safety of our block. So that's going to be pending for a little while. Now we can access it from our current IP and from anywhere in the world. So back in our database, now we are going to hit this connect button. We're going to say the, we're going to connect our application using these drivers. Here, if we click this view full code sample, we are going to see the password. Uh, we're going to see all the, um, the code we need to be running to connect to our MongoDB account. We're not going to use that for now, but we are just going to copy paste the MongoDB, basically our, our secret key here. Here we have to replace the password that we have for the, our user that we just created. And this is what we are going to bring into our .env file. So let's copy that. And then let's open our env. And here we are going to say mongo underscore uri is equal to, and then we're going to just paste that in there. And we are going to word wrap. And then we are going to change this password here with the password of our user. So if we go down to database access, we click edit, 
we click edit password, we say show, we click auto generate new password, we click copy, also show that you're not going to be able to access this um, blog or MongoDB as I will be have deleted it by the time you watch this video. So just for the sake of me showing you the correct keys and not having to hide everything on the screen. So I'm copying that password, update user, and I am pasting that password in here, like so. And then there's another thing we want to add after this mongodb.net slash and before the question mark, we want to add the name that we just made here for our project. That is going to be the name of our actual uh, database. So if we go up here, database, by using, and we go to browse collections, and in order to access this database, in order to perform CRUD operations on this database and not some other database on our uh, MongoDB account, then we need to give it its name. So we're going to add whatever you called this project here, you're going to say here, and I call it CRUD blog 2. Yes, that is correct. So now we have our Mongo uh, underscore UI set up. The next thing we're going to create is a JWT underscore secret and all this in caps. And here you're just going to write uh, whatever you want. You can kind of make or find the password generator that is going to create a good secret password for you. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to write super secret key one, two, three, four. There we go. And that is going to be used to create our tokens, our JSON web tokens. That is all we need in our .env file. Now we can reference those environmental variables in our JavaScript. So now let's go back to our actual uh, blog. Let's go back to the main page and let's open our index.js file. We can remove our console.log. This is going to be our server side logic. And here we are going to basically use uh, all the different, um, we're going to reference all the different NPM packages that we have installed. So we're going to start by saying require. We're going to say dot env. And then we're going to say dot config, like so. Next one, we're going to say const express is going to be equal to require parentheses express. So all of this is going to enable us to use all these different packages in our JavaScript later on. Next one, const course equals require course, oops, require like so, course const favicon equal require serve favicon const body parser capital P equals require body parser const bcrypt equals require b cb crypt and const jwt equals require jwt token next const path 
is going to be equal to require path const mongoose is going to be equal to require mongoose const validator is going to be equal to require validator and const fs is going to be equal to require fs. There we go. That is our main things we are importing and using in our uh, project here. Then we're going to set up the constant for the w JW secret JWT secret and that is going to be equal to process dot env and then dot and now we see we can get a hold of our job JWT and then it's going to be underscore secret and this is how we're accessing the stuff in our .env file. After that, we're going to say const app equals to express. And next, we're going to say const port is equal to process.env.port or 55 like so, 5,500. Then we are gonna make our favicon work. We can say app use favicon. We're gonna say path join. And we're gonna say underscore underscore dear name, comma, public and then favicon oops don't remember don't forget the quotes favicon dot ico like so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect to mongodb we're gonna write const connect db is going to be equal to an async function and here we're going to use a try catch statement so we're going to try const connect con we're going to await the answer from mongoose dot connect We're going to give it the process.env.mongo. Let's actually go into the environmental folder here and just copy this. And we're going to paste that there, like so. Say comma. And then here, another curly bracket, we're going to say use new URL parser equals to true. So don't worry too much about this. This is just like MongoDB setup. Use unified topology equals true and then comma. And then if this fails, we are going to catch the error and like so. So here we are tra basically trying to connect using mongoose uh, using our process.nv.mongooSuri, which is basically holding all our connection data, our username, our password, and which database we want to connect to. 
if it works, we're gonna, uh, it's gonna work. If it doesn't, we're gonna catch the error. Then we are gonna invoke that. We're gonna start that connect db. Then we are gonna run another arrow function. We're gonna say app listen to the port. And then we are going to run another arrow function here. We're going to say console log. And then using backticks, we are going to say listening on port dollar sign port, which is using this port up here that we created. Now we are going to create the actual models. Uh, what is a post going to look like and what is a user going to look like in the database? So Mongo database models. So first we're going to say const post equals to mongoose dot model. And then here we're going to say it's going to be post. And we're going to say new mongoose schema. And we are going to give it a title. It's going to be a string. We are defining what the type of the different uh, data is here. It's going to have content, which is also going to be a string. It's going to have an image URL, also a string. In fact, everything here is going to be a string. It's going to be an author string and time stamp string. There we go. And that is our post template. Then we can copy this down, shift all down. And we are going to say user. And here is going to be user. New Mongo schema, this is going to be the same. But instead of this, we're going to say username is going to be a string. Password is going to be a string. And role is going to be a string. Then we are going to add some middleware. And this is going to use app use course course. And here we're going to say origin so, and we're going to say app use body parser dot json, and we're going to say app use express static path dot join. And we're going to say underscore underscore directory name. Then we're going to say app get. And then it's going to be slash. And then the request we're going to send and the response and then an arrow function res send file path dot join and then directory name and then index dot html then we're going to set ourselves up for success by creating our JWT authentication middleware. 
here we're going to create const authenticate jwt equals to requests response and next arrow function const token is equal to request headers authorization authorization split and we're gonna split on space here and also in the first index if the token exists we are gonna run jwt verify jwt verify like so then we're gonna take the token we're gonna say j we're gonna say we're gonna take we're gonna take the jwt secret and we are going to take the error user and then run a arrow function. So if error, we are going to console log the JWT verification error. So, and then we're gonna give the error message and we are gonna return res send status 403. And if it's no error, we're gonna say rec user equals user. And then we're going to say next. And then if there's no token, else we are going to console log token is missing. And res send status. 401. So now if we have a token, uh, we're getting the token from the J uh, JSON web token. We're going to run this code. If not, we're going to get a token is missing um, error. Then let's handle the user registration. User registration app dot post and then slash register then async request body and result body and then we're gonna run a arrow function const and here we're gonna say username password and role are all going to be equal to the request body. So what we are sending over the network in our request. Then we are going to sanitize and validate user input. For safety, we want to basically sanitize any user input like we have here. Uh, we want to remove people's option, like visitors options to send in any JavaScript code or send in like any malicious code that might uh, affect our database or that might run any JavaScript code. Uh, we want to basically sanitize user input to, uh, remove, to improve security and remove the ability to do SQL injection. So we're going to say const san Sanitized username 
equals validator dot escape and then username. Let's copy this down. Sanitized password equals validator escape password. Then we are going to ensure, oops, like so, ensure valid input data. And here we're going to say if there is no sanitized username or there is no sanitized password, which means if we haven't inputted anything into the fields, if somebody tries to log in with an empty input form, we're just going to return res status 400 and we're going to send an error message and we're going to say invalid input data then we're going to create another constant for our hashed password it's going to be equal to await bcrypt. Now we're using bcrypt. We're going to hash the sanitized password that we're getting, like so. Then we're going to say const new user equals new user. And here we're going to say user name is equal to sanitized, oops, sanitized username. And password is equal to sanitized password. And role is just role. Then we are going to await new user. Hit save. and say res status 201 send and success equals true. So there is our user registration post request ready made. We have a get, we have a post Next up, we're going to make our user login. I'm going to say app post. It's going to be a post request and slash login. That is going to be the URL and it's going to be an async function. It's going to take a request and a result. And in this function, we're going to say const username and password and it's going to be equals to the request body and let's go up here and copy paste the sanitization and valid input checking i'm going to paste that in here and we're going to say sanitize username password that's the same We're just going to keep all of that the same. Then we're going to say const user equals await user. Await find one. And it's going to be username, sanitized username. And then <clears throat> if the user exists, 
we are gonna write another if. We're gonna say if bcrypt compare password with the user password, basically if they're the same, we are gonna say const access token equals JSON web token sign like so. We're gonna say inside of here user name is gonna be user username and role is gonna be user dot role process dot env dot jw secret and then we're gonna set an expires in that this toolkit expires in 24 hours like so then the result is gonna be status 200 and as well dot send is gonna be success equals true token is gonna be access token and role is gonna be user dot roll else if that fails res status 401 and that is gonna send success is false and then if the token or user doesn't exist we are also going to send that status. Next, we're going to create the root to read all posts. We're going to say app get. It's going to be slash posts async request and result. And inside of here, we are going to say const posts equals await post find and then all of them and then res status 200 send posts that's a relatively simple one and then we're gonna say app post for the post one say posts slash posts authenticate with JSON web token async request and res inside of here if request user role is equals to admin so if the user is an admin we want to say const title content image url author timestamp is equal to request body then const new post is equal to new post title content image URL author and timestamp.
then calling new post and dot save dot then saved post res status 201 dot send saved post and let's be sure to capitalize the post like so and for the sake of clarity like so and for the sake of clarity let's split those up and then we're also going to do a catch error press status 500 send error and here it's going to be internal server error like so and then else if that fails we're going to send res send status 450 not 450 403 then we are going to go down we are going to say app get post slash id this is to get the individual actually colon id this is to get the individual posts async request response arrow function const post id equals requests params dot id and const post equals await post dot find by id post id oops then if post that does not exist we are going to return response status 404 send post not found then under here we are going to read the html template from the file so we're going to read the html uh, from the post details uh, file. I'm going to say fs read file. I'm going to give it the path. I'm going to say join. And we're going to say underscore their name. Direct it to the post detail.html. And then it is going to be in the UTF-8 format. And we're going to take the error and the data. And we are going to run if error console log error. and return res status 500 send internal server error then we are going to replace place holders in the html with actual post data const post detail html equals data 
and that's going to be dot replace. And here we are targeting these we made in our uh, HTML details page. So it's going to be slash backslash dollar sign curly brackets post image URL and then slash G comma post image URL. Then we are gonna copy paste this down four times. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna change the image URL to title, title, time stamp, time stamp, author, author, content, and content. Then we are going to send res status 200 send the post details HTML. Then let's create the root for delete post. Here we're going to say app delete and that is going to be slash posts ID comma authenticate async request response so if the request user role is equals to add min we are going to allow this try await post find by id and delete request params id else and we're also going to have a catch here error like so so find and delete uh, the post by the ID. Then we're going to say res status 200 send message is going to be post deleted. If that doesn't work, we're going to res status 500 send and then we're going to send the error with internal server error. And we're going to wrap that in quotation marks like so. And then else res status 500, 403 I mean. 403 send error forbidden then we are gonna update post app put posts ID authenticate async 
request res and then we are gonna write a constant title content equals request body and constant post ID equals requests params dot ID then we are going to try const post equals await await post find by ID post ID then if post does not exist we're going to return res status 404 send error post not found and then if request user role is equal to admin then we are gonna then we are gonna set the post title to title we are gonna set the post content equals to content like so we are gonna await post dot save and we're gonna say res status 200 send I'm gonna send the post and then else if that fails we are gonna res status 403 and we're gonna send that with an error forbidden and let's also wrap that in some quotations and if all of that fails we're gonna catch the error and we are going to rest status 500 send the error with the message internal server error save that that is it for our all our paths for our server so now we can actually start making these requests on our client side so that was a lot of code um, but it's going to pay off now because now we can actually start seeing the results of all our requests now let's open our script.js file here we're going to write the client side code we are going to first get the stored data if there is any we're going to say let stored token is equal to local storage get item and here we're going to get the item with the name of JWT token so if that exists get it copy paste that down next item we're gonna get is gonna be username and username then we're gonna set the username in the HTML so const username element is going to be equal to document get element by ID and that's going to be username and username element we're going to call that going to the text content and we're going to say that is going to be equal to the stored stored user name which is what we should have been writing up here 
There we go, stored token and stored username. Next, we are gonna load page and event listeners document add event listeners we're gonna target the DOM content loaded and then we're gonna send an arrow function I'm gonna say const base URL is gonna be equal to window location and the origin and then we're gonna fetch our posts with a method we haven't made yet and it's gonna be base URL and then if the stored token is existing we're going to say const stored row equals to local storage dot get item user row and then if stored role equals admin we are gonna say show admin features which is another method that we um, have yet to make then we're gonna say const form equal to document get element get element by ID new post form and then we're gonna say if the form exists we are gonna take the form we're gonna say add event listener and that is gonna be a submit event and we're gonna say take that event and create a post and then I'm gonna say event base URL then const login form is equal to document get element get element by ID login form and we're gonna target the login form add event listener and we are gonna copy paste this paste it there and we're just gonna call login user instead then we're gonna target this copy paste it down and we're gonna say register form and that is gonna be the register form here and the register form here and we are gonna call the register user instead so now these are enabling us to create posts login and register as a user as well as showing the admin features once we are logged in as an admin next we want to show the post details const post detail container is equal to document get element by id post detail container and then we're gonna add a listener for detail page window dot add event listener 
here we are going to listen for a load and when that happens we are going to run const url params equal to new url search params that's going to be equal to window location and then search and then we're going to say const post id is equal to url params dot get and we're going to give it post if we now post id and we call the show not admin features show post detail and we give it the post id as an argument then we're gonna fetch posts we're gonna run an async function it's gonna be fetch posts it's gonna take base url as an argument and then here we're going to define const res is equal to await fetch and here we're going to say two backticks we're going to say dollar sign curly brackets base url and then slash posts then const data is equal to await response json and then const admin no posts list is equal to document get element by id posts list and then const is admin is equal to local storage get item user role equals to admin so if the current user is an admin then is admin is true if posts list we're going to take the post list inner html we're going to say data we're going to map we are going to say dot map we're going to take the post and the index run an arrow function and then for every post we're gonna give a const delete button the style is gonna be equal to if it is admin it's gonna be nothing if it's not an admin going to be display of let's see display of none copy that down so if there's an admin we're going to show the delete button if it's uh, not an admin we're going to display it none same with the update button then we're going to return within backticks the actual html so here we're going to actually define the list that we have so we can go to our index.html here and we can find our actual 
post. Let's see everything inside the post list. So we take this part here, copy that, go back, and we can paste it in here. So we're going to return a div with an ID. And here, instead of writing post ID, we are going to write dollar sign curly brackets. We're going to take the post ID. And instead of the image being hard coded source, we are going to give it dollar sign. And that's going to be post dot image URL. The alt is going to stay the same. And then for the post title, we are going to add. Let's just remove this for now. We are going to add another dollar sign curly brackets. If the index is equal to zero, which means it's the first post, then let's ask the question, then we are going to add, or we're going to give an h1 like so. Let's also close that off an h1. Inside of the h1, it's going to be an a tag. And inside of the a tag, we are going to add the post title. And then inside of the a attribute, we're going to give it an href, which is going to be equal to slash posts or slash post slash and then after the, and then here we're going to say dollar sign, we're going to give it the post ID, post, and then be sure to add an underscore here, because that is how it's going to be saved in MongoDB automatically. Then if that is not true, we are going to give it an h3 instead. And that is the end of our title div. Then we're going to write dollar sign brackets and we're going to use this uh, and we're going to use this format here. Let's copy paste that, put that in there. If the index is zero, which means we're on the first post, then we are going to give it a span like so. And show the author's name. Same with the timestamp. And of course here we are going to replace that with interpolation like so. Post.author and let's copy that. And here we're going to say time stamp. And if it's not the first one, it's just going to be empty. Like so. Then we can remove that. And then the admin buttons. For the first button, it's going to have a class of button. It's going to have a style equals to and then inside of here, we are going to say dollar sign delete button style. And we are going to give it an on click equals to delete post. And that is going to also call within brackets and within dollar sign like so post dot underscore ID and then after this um, tick 
we're gonna say comma and another one inside here we are gonna say base URL and then it's gonna say delete button now let's copy everything inside of this button and paste it here this button is gonna have the same style it's gonna have an on click as well but this on click is gonna be called show update form it's still gonna give the post ID and here instead it's gonna get the post title as well as let's see the post content and here we're gonna say update and then if the index is equal to zero we are gonna show the HR and if not we are just gonna show empty and then we're gonna copy paste that down if the index is also zero we're gonna show an H2 just gonna say all articles and it's gonna close with an H2 or nothing if it's not the first one and then after this blue bracket here we're gonna say join like so and that was a mouthful of HTML content directly in our JavaScript but now we are done and we can use this and it should be working Next, we're going to create an async function. We're going to create our create post function. It is going to take an event and base URL. And that event is going to be prevent default, which is reloading the page. We don't want that to just happen. Then we're going to say const title input equals document get element by ID title. Let's copy paste this down three times. We're going to say content input and we're going to get the content. ID. Next ID we're going to get is the image dash URL and that is going to be the image URL input. Then we are going to get the values from the input fields and we're going to say const title is equal to title input dot value. I'm going to copy we're gonna copy paste that down. I'm gonna say control D, target that title, command D, then we can change both to content value. Again, control D, image URL. Then we want to make sure, we want to ensure ensure that inputs are not empty if there is no title or there is no content or there is no image URL basically if a user tries to uh, give us anything that isn't filled out then we are not allowing that to happen alert please 
fill in all fields. And then we are going to return. Then we're going to say const new post is going to be equal to title content image URL author and that is going to be equal to stored username and then timestamp is going to be equal to new date and to local string date string it's going to be undefined and here we're going to say weekday is going to be of the form long year is going to be of the form numeric numeric like so month is going to have the form of long and day is going to have the form of numeric then we're going to create a constant call it headers headers equals new headers inside of here we're going to give it a content type and that is going to be equal to application slash json then we're going to give it an author authorization authorization and that is going to have backticks bear dollar sign and that is going to be stored token then const request options equals to method post headers equals to headers and body is going to be equals to json stringify the new post then we are going to try const response is going to await fetch base url and slash posts and then requests options and then if response is not okay we are gonna say const stored role is equal to local storage get item user role and then we are going to log with backticks error creating creating the post HTTP status and we're going to give it the response status and then else if that fails which means it's correct we are going to clear the input data title input value is going to be reset 
take that down. Then we're going to say the content value is going to be reset and the image URL input is going to be reset. And then we're going to say alert, create post success full, like so. And then if all of that fails, we're going to catch the error. We're going to log. And then we're going to say an error occurred during the fetch. And then we're going to give it the error. And then we're going to also alert, create post failed. Then finally, we're going to fetch posts with the base URL that we have. The next thing we are going to make is the delete delete post route and that is going to be an async function as well it's going to be called delete post it is going to take the post id and base url and then we are going to write const delete url equals and then backticks. And inside of those backticks, we're going to write dollar sign base URL. And then it's going to be slash posts. And then another dollar sign. And here it's going to be post ID. So that is going to take the base URL post and then uh, it's going to add on the Oh, here we need to add a slash like so. And that is going to delete the ID, the post with this ID. Then we are going to do a try catch. Then inside of the try, we're going to write const response. That is going to be await fetch delete URL comma and then inside of here we're going to give it a method of delete it's going to have a headers equals to object authorization which is going to have backticks inside of there bear and here we're going to give it the stored token and comma and comma and then parentheses there and also rem let's remove the parentheses there like so then after here we want to ask if the response is okay if it's a success, we want to alert and we want to say delete post successful. And we also want to fetch posts, basically refresh the posts we have visible. And then else, if it's not successful, we want to alert and we want to say delete post failed. And if it failed, we're going to catch the error and we are going to want to log the error with backticks and inside of here error while deleting 
post. And inside of here, we are going to give the error. And also let's alert delete post failed. That is our delete post. Let us now make the update form. It's going to be a function show update form. It is going to take the post ID, the title, as well as the content as arguments. And inside of here, we're going to say const update form. And that's going to be equals to backticks. And inside of there, we are going to actually define the update form. So we're going to say form. And inside of here, ID with the ID of update form. Inside of here, we are going to create an input. Let's also close that input and it's going to have a type of text. It is going to have an ID of update title. It is going to have a value of, let's see, like so, title. Then after that input, we are going to create a text area. Closing text area. Inside of here, we are going to give it the content, and the text area is going to have an ID of update content. And after the text area, we're going to create a button that is also going to have an end button tag. Inside, we're going to say update post. And the button is going to have an ID of and the button is going to have a type of Submit. Then we are going to close our form like so. And that is going to be our update form that we are going to put into the HTML when needed. Then we're going to say const post element. element is going to be equal to document get element by id. I'm going to take the post id and then we're going to reference that element. We're going to go into the inner HTML and we're going to say plus equals to to add the update form. Then we're going to target the const form and create the DOM element for that as well. Going to target the update form. And then we're going to add an event listener to it, which is going to listen to a submit. And when that happens, that event we are going to update the form with the event as well as the post ID. Then we are going to create the 
update post function async function which is going to be called update post taking the event and post id as arguments and then event wait, event we're going to say prevent default so that it does not refresh the page const title equal to document dot get element by id and that is going to be update title dot value value and let's copy paste that down once next one is going to be content and content And then after here, we are gonna say const base URL is equal to window dot location location dot origin. And then we are gonna ensure that inputs are not empty. We are gonna say if the title does not exist or the content does not exist then we are going to alert and we are going to say please fill in all fields then we are going to return and then after here we're going to say const updated post is going to be equal to title and content then we are going to make a try catch inside of here we are going to say const response is equal to a wait fetch and backticks that is going to be dollar curly brackets base url slash posts slash dollar brackets posts id then after the bracket we're gonna say another uh, curly bracket here inside here it's gonna be a method the method is gonna be put the headers is going to be let's see we can go up here and copy paste that from another one. Let's copy the rest of the catch method here from authorization, actually from headers like so. Put that in here, save. And then under the authorization, we're gonna say body. That is gonna be JSON, stringify, and updated post. We also need to add over the authorization our content type, which is equal to application application slash JSON. Then if response is okay, we are going to alert, update, post successful, we're going to fetch post, refresh, else, update, post failed, then we're going to catch the error, console error, and an error occurred during the fetch and we're gonna give it like so the error then alert update post failed next up we are gonna make the register 
user function. Here we are going to copy paste this first part as well. Let's copy paste this whole function actually. Paste it below the register user comment. It is quite similar. We're going to take and change the name to register user. It's going to take event and base URL. We're going to prevent the a default event, which is refreshing the page. Then we are going to target with command D the title here. We're going to say user name input. It's going to be document get element by ID and that is going to be register username. Then we can delete these other two and we can copy this down. Here instead of username, command D, it's going to be password. And then here user input is going to be role input. And here it's going to be register role. Then const user name is going to be equal to user name input dot value. Copy that down twice. Username, username, password. And then this one is going to be role. Then we are going to ensure the inputs are not empty indeed. But here we're going to change that to username. We're going to change the second one to password. And then we're going to add the last one if role is empty. Then please fill in all the fields and then return. Then const new user is going to be username password as well as role. Then we are going to remove the try catch here. We are going to say const response await fetch base URL and here it's going to be register slash register inside of here it's going to be post headers is going to be content type application JSON we do not need authorization here body is going to be JSON stringify new user then we are going to add const data is going to be a wait response JSON and then if data is equal to success we're going to alert registered successfully and then we are going to clear input fields. We're going to say username input value is equal to empty string. Copy that down twice. We're going to say password val input and also role input. And then else, we're going to say registration failed. Then we are going to create our login user function. Let's copy our last function here. Register user. Paste it there. So login user, that is going to be called login user taking event and base URL preventing default const username input is getting the document from the document get element by ID and here it's going to be login username and it's also going to be a login username and a login actually role we don't need here 
Same here. Remove roll. And so const username is going to be username input value and password input value. That is correct. Then same here, we are going to take if username is not there or password is not there. We are going to say alert, please fill in all the fields and then we're going to return. And then const user is going to be username and password. And then const res is going to be await fetch base URL. And here it's going to be login. Then the method is going to be post headers content type application JSON. Body is going to be JSON stringify user. Const data await rest JSON. And then if data is success, then we're going to go into local storage set item. We're going to set the JWT token to be data dot token. Copy that down twice. Then we're going to set the user role to be data dot role and the user name to be data. Actually, that's just going to be username. Then delete that. We are going to close the hamburger menu if open. We are going to say links container dot class list dot toggle active and hamburger dot class list dot toggle active. Then we are going to clear input fields. Username input is going to be zero. Password input, also empty string. And we are going to say location reload to reload the page. And then if data dot role is equal to admin. We are going to show admin features. We're going to call that function. Else we are going to alert login failed. Then we are going to say admin features. We're going to define that function. It's going to be a function show admin features, not taking any arguments. Const new post div equals document get element by ID. And that is going to target the new post div. And then if new post div exists, we are going to say new post div style display is going to be equal to flex const all btns equals document. Here we're going to target all the admin buttons. Query selector all btn. Don't forget the dot. And then we're going to say all btn for each method, for each button, 
PTN. Arrow function. If BTN exists, we're going to say BTN style display is equal to block. Then the logout that is going to be document add event listener DOM content loaded. Arrow function const base URL equal to window dot location dot origin const register div equals to document dot get element by ID. And that is going to be register div. Paste that down. Next one is login div. Next one is log out div. Same here, a log out. And last one is going to be log out btn actually button and this one's going to be log out button this is going to be log in make sure to fix that First one is register, register div, like so, register div, register div, login div, login div, logout div, logout div, logout log button, logout button. Okay, seems like all of them are correct. Then, if stored token exists, which means we're logged in, take the register div, Go into the style, go into the display, display, and set that to none. Copy that down. Same with the login div. Copy that down. The log out div, however, we're going to set to flex because if we're logged in, we want to show the log out. And then the log out button style. Actually, button. We're going to add event listener. We are going to listen to click. If that happens, we are going to run a function. And that is going to go into the local storage. We're going to remove item and we are going to remove the JWT token. And we're also going to remove the user role. And we're also going to remove the user name. No capital there. Then we're going to go into location. We're going to go to reload. And then if that doesn't work, we're going to say else register div dot style dot display display is equal to flex and login div dot style dot display is equal to flex. Like so and log out div dot style dot display is equal to none. And that is all the code we need here for our script. Now, after all of that writing, let's actually test this 
uh, blog. Let's put it out live so we can test the functionality and see if we get any errors and then we can fix them and see, work our way towards the finished product. So let's open our GitHub desktop and we are gonna publish this. So finish version one. We're gonna commit to main. We're gonna push the origin. And then now it's on our GitHub account. We are gonna go to cyclic.sh. We are gonna log in, sign up first if you haven't, then log in. Here's the other blog. We are gonna create a new uh, app. We are gonna click this button, link your own. We are gonna search our repository. It's already linked my uh, GitHub account here because I signed in with GitHub. And then we are gonna click this uh, CRUD blog two, which we see here. Now it's gonna install, build and start as specified by a package JSON at the root of the repo. We are gonna click this advanced and we are going to, we're gonna keep the build option standard. We're gonna to go to variables and we're gonna add a variable. Here we're gonna write mongodb.uri and then we are gonna go into our actual app here. We are gonna go and get the first line here. We're gonna copy the whole thing we are gonna paste that in there. Be sure to remove the Mongo URI here. We are also gonna add the secret here. So let's be sure to copy that and paste that in here. So the secret, and then I'm gonna copy the actual value, put it in there. And then we are gonna hit this connect cyclic. And then it's going to run its uh, thing and set our whole, whole app up. So now let us go and test the app. So we can click this link and get our app. Yay! It seems to be working at least. This is the um, HTML that we are, we have hard coded. Let's now see if we can register a new user. Let's say admin and admin. And I'm gonna register as an admin, Let's say register. And we are getting a error. Please fill on in all the fields. So now the fun begins. We are gonna figure out why we are not being able to fill in the fields here. Although we have actually done that, let's refresh the page. See, we're getting, nope, we are not getting some errors initially. Let's try that again, admin, admin, and admin, register. So we are getting two errors here, which we are gonna fix. So back in our project, let's close this. Let's go to our index.html file. Let's remove the posts from the post lists. Like so, we are gonna be creating them from the um, API, from the database. And let's update our repository with these changes. So we're just gonna commit to main, push origin, and then if we go to cyclic, we are go back here and we look at the deployments tab here, we can see that we have updated. It's automatically updating from GitHub. So let's refresh that. And as expected, we are not getting anything here now because there's no posts available. Let's now try to create another admin. Is it because of this? Let's see, admin. Please fill in all the fields. Okay, well, let's solve these problems here because they might be what is going on. So fetch post is failing. If we go into our script and we find the 51, which is where fetch post is. The first thing I noticed here is that we are using post dot slash 
first thing I noticed here is that we are correctly using post dot underscore ID but we are lacking it here so let's add that that is how it is being made in MongoDB or is going to be made in MongoDB the next thing the next thing I see is that we have an on click here capitalized with a C it is actually just without the capitalization and also this HR should not have a ending tag like so so let's update that push and see if that solves it open up our browser we have we're deploying it has deployed let's refresh our page let's try again if we click here right admin admin and register we get please fill in all fields we're getting the same script fetch posts script js 14 so checking out our cyclic uh, app our variables here i noticed that mongodb is here which we wrote in um, manually but then we have mongo uri here which is just empty so we can see if we open our if we open our um, environmental variables here we have actually just written mongo uri and we should write mongodb uri and same in our index here if we search for mongo mongo then we have we see here mongo uri let's change that to db let's see if we have other ones here then let's save that save the script save everything save the env file let's update our index here let us let us also delete this one and save and hopefully now we'll be able to connect so get the deployment let's reload if we now write admin admin put admin and register we get told to fill in the fields but we are done we actually are, don't get an error so that is very very good let's try reader 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 and let's see if we can debug this so please fill in all the fields so let's see if we open our network we are not getting a request. We are being stopped, basically. We see here we're fetching the post uh, successfully because we can see, we see that we are fetching the posts that are empty. The script is being loaded, the nav is being loaded, style. We are loading this one correctly. Favicon is being loaded correctly. so. Things are working. We just have, we have failed to load response data. Let's try that again. Please fill in all fields. Okay, let's open back our project. Now our ENV is correct. And let's search for please fill in all fields. So we have four of those here, none in an index. So it means this is a client side error. In the first one, we're gonna add one. In the second one, we're gonna add two. Third one, we are gonna add three. Fourth one, we are gonna add four. Save that 
and let us update our script in GitHub Desktop, push that to the server. And now hopefully we're gonna be able to see which one of these is failing. Most likely it's gonna be, let's see, not update, create, let's see, it should be the create register user. So I'm uh, thinking it's gonna be the number three here. We see that we have updated our script. Let's update the website, refresh the website. Let's try to create another user. Let's create an admin this time. Change that to admin. And indeed it's the number three that is uh, failing. So now we have narrowed it down. It's the register user that is not working. So we are getting that one of these is empty. So let's just see if we have written these correctly in our HTML. So let's copy that, let's search. And then also let's open our index. So we are getting a register username. Let's search next time the register password. It is also showing up in the HTML. How about register role? It is also showing up in the uh, index.html. Which probably means then we have Ah, I see what we have done wrong. We have probably copy pasted this from the one above here, update post, where we are getting the value of the uh, what is inside of the title. And so this value part here is stuck, but it's not actually supposed to be there. So let's remove those like so, save. And let's see if that solves our little conundrum. Let us update the script, push origin, open up our CRUD cyclic, wait for that to reload. Now it has updated the newest one. Let's update our website again. And now let's try to create another admin user admin register registered successful that is cool okay so now we have a working register let's see in our database going back to our mongodb database let's just refresh the page and then we're going to go to our crud blog 2 database browse collections we have an empty posts uh, part and we have users. And look here, we have a user with username admin, password admin, role admin, and then this is the auto-generated MongoDB ID. How cool is that? Okay, let's see if the reader role also works. So if we go here, we just say reader, 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 and then register it also works. If we go to our network, we see that we have two register uh, requests here. Number one is a post of, let's see, payload. We see what we sent in and the other one as well. So great, these are working. Success, success, awesome. Now let's try to log in, see if that also works. So let's try to log in with our admin user. Log in, nothing is happening. Let's refresh the page. Let's see, admin, admin. Let's keep our network open. So nothing is happening when I click this login button. Let's inspect that button. Does it even have an all click? This one has Submit. This one also has submit. It's 
So let's check out the HTML here because nothing is firing when we click this admin, this login button. We're not getting an error or anything. So it makes me think there's might be something wrong in the HTML. So let's go to the index and go to find the login div. So it has a login div um, ID, login h1, login form ID. It has an input type text with an ID of login username, placeholder username, that looks good. Input type password, ID, login password, placeholder password. It's looking good. Ah, look, our button is outside of the form. So let's copy that, or uh, actually cut it and paste it inside of the form. And let's see if that solves our issue. So let's update in our GitHub desktop, push the origin, update our uh, repository, and that is gonna deploy a new uh, uh, version. Then let's check out and reload our web page. Let's open and let's try to log in again with our admin user. Please fill in all fields for. Well, there we go. Now we have, we know which one is wrong. We have no error message. We just get that we need to fill in the form. So let's go back to our script. Let's search for four. That brings us to line 286. We did the same mistake here. We are not supposed to have value here. This is just a, a mistake we made or I made because of the copy pasting. So let's then save that, update our script, push origin, open up our uh, cyclic again, wait for this to uh, redeploy. Deployed and let's refresh our site. Now let's try to log in, admin, admin, and we are logged in. How cool is that? Okay. That is really, really cool. Now we are fetching the posts, which are currently empty. And we are logged in as our user. Let's try to log, and it's also showing as our username. Cool. Let's log out. It seemed to have worked. Cool. Admin, admin. Let's just do a bit of testing. Logging in. It's working. It's showing the uh, admin features, because if we weren't an admin, this shouldn't show. Let's log out and try logging in as the reader where nothing new is should be shown. Log in and nothing new is shown. Pretty cool. Also updating our, um, our name here. Log out. So let's log in with our admin and actually create a new post. Let's go to unsplash.com. Let's find uh, a nice Picture, for example, yeah, let's take this one. And we're gonna copy image address. We're gonna paste it in there. We're gonna say how the Greeks and the Romans made statues. And then we're gonna say lorem ipsum here. And we're gonna create post. Create post successful. Look at that. Okay, cool. We have some styling issues here, but that's not going to be a big problem solving. Um, but we have made a post and it is being shown on our blog that is hosted online. How cool is that? Now, if we check out our database again, we go to posts. We see that we have a post here. And that is exactly what we just sent in. Cool. Let's make a couple of more posts. So let's take, um, let's say this one, copy image address. Going over to our Nordic Rose again. Pasting. 
tree in the desert. Lorem ipsum. Create post. Successful. Cool. Now we see that we are we haven't been able to remove the anchor styling on these things, which we're gonna do. Let's create two more posts. This is fun. Finally, the payoff. Let's see, let's take this one, copy image address. More nature stuff. And yet some more lorem. There we go. And let's find another similar one. Let's see this one. And then the sea is really nice. Lorem ipsum. And then the post, successful. And here we can see we have our working blog. It is getting there. If we inspect, we are we don't have any errors, which is great. It is looking good on the mobile as well. So it seems like we are not accurately targeting the first um, post because all of this belongs to the first post. If we inspect, it is all within the first uh, post's div. So we are failing to style it correctly. Before we jump into fixing that, let's also just see if we can um, also yeah, the image is probably a bit too big as well, I believe. Let's see if we click it. Yeah, we also are not able to get the detail. So we're gonna fix that as well. But we are probably having a too big image. Let's see if we can update and delete these posts. So let's take the last one, hit delete. Cannot get, okay. Update, cannot get. Okay, so we have a problem with our other um, other routes, other post and delete and put uh, paths. Okay, let's do the styling first. So let us inspect this and see if we can find any difference between the finished, let's see. Between the finished um, uh, version that we have here and the new version. So inspecting that and let's also inspect that in the same length here. So that's pretty close. Let's inspect this one. We see that it has a P element, another P element inside of a span. That span is directly below the post title. How does it look in the other one? We have a P element, P element, and we are, it is looking different. H ref here. So we have an A here. Let's open that. Yeah, we are creating some wonky stuff here. Let's split the screen. Let's put one on one side and the other one on the other side so we can compare them proper. Also, let's zoom out to 100% on both. Okay, great. So in our span here, which is here, span, 
admin buttons, admin buttons. If we open the buttons, they are showing a lot of stuff. If we open the buttons here, they are. Uh, yes. Lower and Ipsum, okay. I think that is okay. Let's work our way up. So after the admin buttons, we have a span that is correct. It's being shown correct, but then we have and a, uh, we have an anchor tag here that is not supposed to be here. It's like double up with the anchor tag that is here. It should only be here in the uh, H1. And this, does it even have one? Yeah, okay. So we are duplicating this here. Under the H1, we're adding another anchor tag. Let's see if we can go and remove that in our code. So in our fetch posts here, let's see, we have our H1. We have an So let's see, let's start from the top posts. We have its admin, okay. Inside of here, we are returning, and so on 68, it's an h1, an a, href, post, post ID, post title. Ah, I see, here we are doing something extra. So we should remove these. And then that should fix the issue. We had some extra uh, brackets here. Let's save and update our post, push origin. And let's see if that is gonna solve it. So deploying. And let's refresh the page. And indeed, it does seem to have solved the issue. Cool. Now we have fixed the styling. It is looking exactly like in the finished one, apart, apart from obviously having a different uh, uh, pictures and posts. If we now log out, Ah, we are logged out, but we are still showing the uh, the admin features, so that's not working. So we're gonna address that, but let's, yeah, let's do that right away. So we are gonna go to our, we're gonna log in as an admin again, log in. Actually, let's log out and then let's refresh the page. Yeah, that doesn't make um, the um, admin features disappear. Let's go to our network. Let us also close this or make it smaller so we can have the reference, but also see what's going on here. So when we log out, normally we should clear the application's local storage. So I have that open now. If I log in, we see that it is being um, stored in the local storage. And when I log out, it's clearing it. Okay, so that part is working. Um, what is not working is simply hiding, changing this um, styling it seems it seems like it's being um, the style inline style here is seems to be uh, I seem to 
I see the problem, I think. If we go here and we log in as well with an admin. And then we inspect here. We see the style on click. It seems like we are missing the end um, quotation mark here in the style and display none. It is being added. Admin buttons. Admin buttons, display block, display block. None on click, as we can see here. So on click is being added as well as a style, which is wrong. If we go here, style, and we see we are missing the ending uh, quotation mark here like so, hit save, update our script, push our origin, and then let's wait for our deployment to be updated. Hit refresh. And now we see it is gone. So if we log in, admin, admin, log in, we have our admin features. If I log out, they disappear. Perfect. Little by little, we are making this work. So let's log in with our admin again and let's see why we can't go to, and let's actually see why we can't update a post. So let's see, uh, new content, update post. Maybe it works now. Let's click one. No, not found. Get. This post is not found. Okay, let's. Not found. Okay. How about if we try to delete? Delete post failed. So we are getting not found. The update though seemed to. So let's see. The C. The sand. Update post. So the C is really nice. So it is, the update is not failing, but it is not updating the actual content here. So if we try to delete again, delete post failed. So let's go into our script JS, 157 line. 157th line. As we can see here, we get the delete post failed. So it's an async function delete post. We're getting the post ID, the base URL, constant delete URL. We're taking the base URL slash posts slash post ID. So let's see if we can actually uh, access this at all. Let's copy that. Let's go into our uh, header here and then put in slash posts. So we are getting that. Um, now we're getting the raw JSON formatted um, uh, posts from our database. So that is working. Let's also try to access the uh, individual post. So posts and then what is it? Let's see. Post and then post ID. Okay, great. Let's just copy the ID straight from here. Paste that in. Is it maybe singular post? Okay, so this seems to be failing. Posts and then the post ID seems to be we are not able to access a singular post. We're able to access all the posts, but not the ID. 
So it's something about accessing one single post. Let's try another one just for the sake of uh, double checking here. Yeah, cannot get, okay, not found. So it is nothing to do with the delete post. We are not able to access a single post. That is why it's failing to delete or update or actually go to the detail page, which makes me think that this is not a client side issue, but a server side issue. So fetch post is working. We are getting all of them but we are not being able to get a single post. So let's see. So let's open up our deployment here. Let's go to the logs of the actual server here and maybe that will give us some clue. So here we can see our post is successful. Request headers. And then we see that our get is not successful response headers, response payload, cannot get posts. Okay. So it is definitely a server side issue. Let us open up our server code again. So that's the index. And let's look for the posts. So login, we have user. So read all posts is working. Then probably where the issue is, is probably here. And I think I see it already. We have forgotten a slash here. So it's supposed to be slash uh, ID. Let's save and see if that was the issue. It's definitely the issue, but let's see if that was the issue. And then let's see when our deployment is uh, building complete. Let's now see, let's copy this. Add that at the end here. Still not able to get, let's actually refresh the whole app. Let's click this one. And it is working. Okay, so we are getting some other errors here, but we are accessing the detail page. Let's see if we can update this uh, tree title. So this is not a tree in the desert from here. This is a mountain in the desert. Update. We are getting an uncaught script error. Okay, let's try to delete the last one, delete post failed. Okay, let's update the content. Hello. Okay, not working. We are accessing the page though, which is good. The styling is not being implemented on the detail page. And we are not able to get the post styles and nav, so that should be an easy fix, but we are accessing the post, so that's good. We are able to access the post. Maybe we simply have just uh, forgotten this in all the um, other ones as well. So let's see, let's search ID. Indeed we have. In the delete we forgot, and in the update we also forgot. So now all of them should be correct. Let's update, push origin. Let's wait for our um, new uh, commit. Let's now refresh our page.
and let us go to um, let's try to update this title again mountain in the desert update post it's not working let's try to delete it delete post successful okay well it is working to delete the post great one out of the way let's try to update here without the C side is really nice update post okay that is not working let's see if our logs say anything they do indeed say quite a lot very big uh, error here let's see getting a post request throw new cast error object ID so we're getting a post slash nav post slash script post slash styles so these are not being uh, properly so let's let's deal with these first uh, maybe that is the the ultimate um, error here because they are not being uh, fetched on the detail page so let's open our detail post detail and of course when we are on the post detail page we're not actually on um, we are actually not on the main page we're on the sub page even though this is in the root folder when we're hosting it this is going to be the main page and this post detail is going to be a, a subdomain so we actually need to add like this so dot dot slash for the nav the script and as well for the styles up here dot dot slash let's now save that and update our uh, repository then let's open our logs let us refresh our website so it seems like that is working now if we click on detail page we see that we are actually um, we are getting the correct um, styling if we click on the detail page here well not completely correct there is still some issue with the uh, main picture here but we are getting the styling and we're not getting any errors okay that is a good improvement let's see if we now try to update this title the beach is nice update post it is failing let's see what the logs say it is lagging a lot now and it makes me think we're trying to run some function like there's a lot of code that is being um, run here it's really lagging the browser quite a lot online so here in line 178 app get post ID we are console logging error let's console error the error and see if that removes the massive amount of uh, data we're sending or logging let's see push that open our deployment here open the logs it seems like it's a bit more quiet now let's see if we make another request just for the normal app is making a lot of requests I wonder if we have an uh, infinite loop or something is not working correctly with how we are making our requests it's really making the server run slow fail to run npm run start start script defined in package json Okay, 
what else that is a bit weird let's see let's go to our variables actually our environment let's go to our our build option you see that we're not making all these requests here these are a bit weird these all these fonts hmm okay so there's something about how we are fetching these fonts here. We are sending a lot of requests for these fonts. So I have been looking and I noticed that on line 75, we're still console logging here instead of actually console error, which might also be causing a lot of uh, data transfer same here error it should be like so and then on line 104 we are also using the sanitized password instead of the hashed password so let's just do that like so Let's update these changes, push origin, and let's see what that does to our page. Let's update. Still sending a lot of requests. Okay. Let's try to update the another C update post. Nothing is happening. Let us open our uh, server side now. Let us open our client side. So in our script, let's go to 81. Here we have actually two delete button style. This one is supposed to be update button style. Then we have more console logs that should be console errors. 138 log, that should be an error. Like so, same here, console error on line 147. Then on line 190, we are calling the update form. But here we should be calling the update post. Like so. And then on 218, we are also stringifying update post, whilst actually would we should be stringifying updated post, like so. Okay, let's save that, update our script, push origin, and let's see if that does something. Let us try to refresh our page, fresh. Still making a lot of requests, but let's update a post now. See the beach. Update post successful. Okay, cool. The beach is really nice. Let us try to delete a post now. Delete, delete post successful. Great. 
let's try to update here, updated uh, content, update post. That is working great. Okay, let's try to visit the details section. Great, okay, now we are really getting close to uh, a fully functioning site. Let's log out, visit the detail page, great. The main detail page is working, okay. Let's now try to fix the detail page. Uh, we have on line 68, actually in the main, we should have some back ticks here encapsulating the main here so that these things properly are rendered and as well here we actually added an alt to the image and this should be a class let's save that and that should fix the styling for our detail page i believe now it's pending let us refresh and now let's click and there we go now the detail page is also showing properly if we go back we click one here it is showing properly as well great okay if i open the finished one here and i reload it is taking 127 milliseconds to run this script so something is going slowly on this new version. If I run it again. Okay, actually the, this one is also loading the site, uh, all the styles several times as well. Okay, so maybe there's actually no error. If I run this one again, update, okay. I think I have been chasing ghosts. It's actually, after the initial load, it is actually quite fast. I think we are actually done with our blog. That was a lot of issues to fix. Sorry about that. But I think also that is probably the most interesting part of creating anything uh, with encoding is to actually debug. And I hope that this debugging sessions um, were very useful to you, how we use the console, how we use the errors, how we check the logs, how we were deploying and updating the code as we went. Um, let's see, let's create a last time and see that everything is working. So let's create user1, one. user1 one as a password, it's going to be an admin, I'm going to register that user. It's successful. We are going to log in user one, user one, log in. We are logged in. Let's create a new post, new post, new post. And let's just copy the image address here, paste that in. New post, successful, and it seems to be working. If we visit that detail page, it is being displayed properly. And our mobile version is also being rendered as it should. Okay, but great. We have successfully finished our blog uh, website using MongoDB, using Express, using Node and Cyclic. I hope that this um, tutorial was fun and useful for you and I hope that it wasn't too much of a hassle to uh, do the debugging with me. Um, if you like this video then I highly suggest this next video that is recommended for you and please let me know in the comments what video you would like to see next. Until next time, see ya.